The 2012 Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship is raced over 12 weekends in the summer and starts just two weeks after the 17-week Monster Energy Supercross Series. That's not much time for these athletes to relax, recharge their batteries, and spend time with their families. After round five at Bud's Creek, the riders and crews would get a three-week break to do just that. It's hot. And while most of his competitors would head back to the motocross meccas of Southern California or Florida, Geico Honda's Eli Tomac would journey back to his own special place, his lifetime home and all it has to offer in Colorado. Only the ones that we're going to eat are going to have names. <laughs> I just kind of messed up. We use probably four cubic feet per second, and it's running 24 7. So oh my God. You can do the math, but it's a lot of water. <laughs> The mountains of Colorado are not known for producing world-class motorcycle racers, but providing the terrain and elevation for world-class mountain bike and ski racers. Well, I was in Durango most of my mountain bike racing career. We wanted a bigger piece of property and, you know, a place to raise the boys. That was uh, kind of unique and out of the way. And and it gave them a good experience growing up. Mountain biking, I started when it started getting big in Durango. And then I started downhilling, and then I went to cross country. And then I met John and had a kid, so I couldn't compete too much. I can't complain about, you know, where I live at all. Um, you know, I have like a huge ranch, my own track, you know, basically to do whatever you want on. I think he won his first title when he was maybe in that seven to nine age group. You know, honestly, I'd have to go back in time to figure out what year it was. We're here at Sand Canyon Trailhead, which is across the street from our ranch. We live over there, behind that big rock. With a racing legend for a father and nature's training ground in your backyard, it only makes sense that mountain biking is a key component for Eli's fitness program. This is how it always is. I'm, in, I'm the one in the front on the mountain bikes. <laughs> He's the guy in the back. Him being like a, a world champion mountain biker is obviously going to help me with my training and knowing what to do or what to eat. But I mean, he's still obviously uh, my dad too. But if you get passed by your gene pool, I think it's acceptable. I definitely look at him more as a normal dad than, you know, the 1991 world champion mountain bike guy. Well, in the scope of all of his training, cycling probably makes up maybe 25%. When I come out here, well, like say if it's a week after Red Butt or something, and you go out there and get fifth place in that first moto, or, or if you don't get a podium, it always just like fuels the fire for, you know, the next week's training. It seems like it just makes it easy. And, Gets you nice and pissed off. Hopefully this is me next week. And that's Baggett back there. These are super good for your balance. Yeah, these are pretty gnarly. Balance is something Eli has known his entire life. And when his throttle is not pinned in front of 30,000 fans, his other interests let him appreciate his profession. I think that's what's special about Eli. He didn't have to do a lot of local racing and really chase this and chase that. We let him be a kid too, and he rode his mountain bike, he rode his BMX bike, skateboarded, archery. We just didn't really make it just motocross, motocross, motocross. I'm pretty big into golf. It just seems like one thing you know, a moto guy can do to kind of get away from everything. You're like, you know, it's just go out. You go out there. It's more peaceful. There's not like 120 decibels of noise just grinding away in your brain. But I shoot like mid 80s, you know, low low 80s on a good day. So. Where's I go? <laughs> Goes up into the loft there. There's a little house up there. Yeah. That one has been amazing. How long it's like taken. A lot of times we'll get one and it'll be gone in a month or two months. There's a line from the Wizard of Oz about lions and tigers and bears. Well, there's no shortage of critters in Tomac country. You have mountain bear. lions and bobcats and coyotes and like I've seen like Foxes just laying out in the field, just dead, shredded from a lion. We like to do a lot of elk hunting, like archery elk hunting here in Colorado. It's pretty epic. Like me and my dad will just basically leave the house here every morning, like at three o'clock, and then go bombing up into the mountains. You know. Definitely a kill. <laughs> I'm not a good chicken handler. 
Ich bin schon <lacht> Let's go ride some dirt bikes. We good to go, Pop? No. No? I should wait a little bit? Yes. It might be hard not to get distracted with all around him, but for Eli Tomac, the business at hand is never forgotten. So it takes about almost 15 loads at 2,200 gallons. So it's like 30,000 gallons or something. Wow. Every time we Do ride. Like it. If you get into the function part, we have Renegade race gas that we burn up here. We're at elevation, so we need all the help we can get. It smells good. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I think it's killing brain cells. It's just good practice to stay off your clutch in the corners so you keep your momentum up. And then we'll do like the next four laps, like feet on the pegs. So I just kind of go around like road race style. That red butt at it, because we had dry strapped to my chest protector. And a piece fell off and went down my pants. Oh, dude. <laughs> Own my right butt cheek. When you ride a, a 250 up here at elevation, the thing feels like it's a 125. You know, we tend to ride a 450 up here actually a, a fair amount to, to get a little more simulated feel for his race bike. It seems like I work pretty well just kind of doing it solo. Um, seems like I've kind of been like that my whole life. And this young man's paradise has another disadvantage for a pro motocross rider. There's no like other top pro in this in this area, you know, you can just call up and, and have him come down and ride, you know. It's not like in California where you can go to the local Glen Helen or wherever it is. You know, go ride with a bunch of guys. So here it's basically just stop watch or they're just riding with other buddies. At this point in the 250 championship series, Eli sits third in points. 22 points back from series leader Blake Baggett and nine back from his teammate in second, Justin Barsha. Back's not lost on his trainer and mentor. You know, he needs to start winning motos um, and making points back. I'm confident he'll, he'll work through it. Um, he kind of has to. Didn't really have a choice. When he rejoins his team in Redbud for round six, Eli Tomac will have again been reminded how special his life is and how much support he has towards fulfilling his goals and dreams. We like competition, maybe, and that's what drives us to want to help him succeed, maybe a little bit. I wouldn't want to look back and say, like, oh, I should try a little bit harder in this race, or man, I wish I could have got that, you know, or something like that. So I just want to make sure I, I feel like I've done everything I could. The most important thing is that you're honest with yourself and you've put the work in and you've done your best. I just can't wait for the gate to drop sometimes. Join us next week at allysports.com backslash YouTube as Eli and the rest of the Geico Honda Young Guns take on Millville, Minnesota, round seven. Oh no, did he poop right there for you? <laughs> did you take a picture of that nice, beautiful breakfast right there? I saw it as, I got it out as it was delivered. <laughs> <laughs>